Welcome to this week's episode of Black Man Spy. It's yet another flash traffic, which means an important update for you, the viewer, who needs to know what we're talking about. Donald Trump is being indicted for the third time this year. This time it's in relation to the classified documents case because that has been updated with a superseding indictment. So what went on the last time? As you all know, Donald Trump, when he left office, stole several hundred classified documents, including documents that were marked top secret, no foreign, which means no foreign eyes are supposed to see them, and hid these documents in boxes in Mar-a-Lago. The National Records Bureau asked for those documents back because all documents generated by the President of the United States, given to the President of the United States, or associated with them and his staff are the property of the United States government. He apparently decided he would just take documents in his misguided belief that the Presidential Records Act gave him complete immunity and that he could take what he wanted. So he took several hundred top secret, secret, and otherwise classified documents. Then when the government asked for them back, he claimed he didn't have them. The FBI was forced to do a raid on Mar-a-Lago and they found hundreds of documents in his possession. He was charged with 37 counts, felony counts, of withholding these documents and possession of classified information. He also lied about having these documents and lied about to his lawyers about having these documents. He, in fact, had a document in his desk. It appears that these documents were hidden around Mar-a-Lago in a series of boxes. His aide, an ex-Navy cook by the name of Walty Nauta, was the man in charge of playing the shell game with the FBI and the lawyers to keep these top secret documents away from the United States government to whom they belonged. Now we're finding in a superseding indictment, Nauta was also charged with three more felony counts. Trump was charged with five more felony counts, bringing his total to 42, and a new player came on the scene, Carlos de Oliveira, the maintenance manager of Mar-a-Lago. It appears in conspiracy with Trump and Nauta alone, hidden from everybody else. Trump directed Nauta and de Oliveira to move these boxes around. Then when the FBI wanted surveillance video of Mar-a-Lago, Trump directed Nauta to direct de Oliveira to direct the head of the security office's IT division, which had access to these videos to destroy the surveillance video. I am not joking. When the IT specialist said he didn't know how to do that and he couldn't do it and wouldn't do it, then the conspiracy began in earnest to gain access to and to destroy those. One part that was not put in the indictment, but we all knew about last year, was D. Oliveira apparently was the individual who emptied the pool at Mar-a-Lago and somehow accidentally flooded the security surveillance server office, supposedly to damage the servers and to destroy the surveillance video in furtherance to this conspiracy. You cannot make this up. So for all of Donald Trump's ranting about Hillary Clinton destroying documents on the server, he ordered the surveillance video at Mar-a-Lago destroyed, essentially so he could go into a he said, she said argument with the FBI. And if the FBI got access to it, they would not have the original servers. Apparently, they don't understand how computers work and that servers work. We copy, we recover things from the bottom of the ocean and can actually get that data if it's not completely corrupted. So that is what the new indictments are for. But Malcolm, this is all over the news. You've explained it to us simply. Why are you concerned about this in Black Man Spot? Well, it's simple. Now I'm starting to wonder, why did Donald Trump go to such great lengths to hide play the shell game and whack-a-mole with the FBI about these top secret and secret documents. Now I'm starting to get suspicious. 
And what I've come up with in this week's Substack article, which is about 1,500 words, I've determined that Donald Trump was playing a version of Kiss, Marry, or Kill along with these documents. I call them brag, frame, sell, because that is all you can do with these documents in his possession. Some of them, as we saw with the Iran invasion plan, which Trump claims was just a bunch of papers, now we understand the FBI has those documents in their possession. He showed them to a biographer and to an editor claiming that General Milley sent him these plans to invade Iran, and this gets him off the hook, but Trump knew that they were secret. Well, Trump bragged with those documents and was using them as evidence to show that he had such a great big brain. So that's the kind of documents I would say that Trump would use and wanted to have kept to brag to people. Within those documents were five presidential daily briefings. PDBs are a conglomeration document of some of the most sensitive secrets dumbed down for a president like Donald Trump. Dumbed down almost to the point where they're almost the same thing that they would get in the New York Times. It's just that the sources all came from secret and top secret sources, not New York Times sitting around in a bar having a coffee uh, with a, other journalists or other sources. This comes from America's greatest top secrets. These are the sort of documents Donald Trump would have used to brag to people. Oh, I was president of the United States. Here's my PDB on what I would do with Russia or, or Iran or Israel. Those are the documents that we would put under the brag category. The frame category would be those documents that he would show off either in one of his many bars at his resorts or to his besties that he would have in one of his rooms, like the not secret documents, letters that were sent to him by Kim Jong-un, the dictator of North Korea. Trump attempted to keep those documents. They are not his property. They are the property of the people of the United States. All the documents are the property of the people of the United States. None of them belong to any president. They belong to America. Donald Trump would have likely tried to frame those, but the ones that I suspect that he would really have wanted to frame and put up were the talent keyhole related imagery documents that had been brought by classified pictures of top secret enemy facilities, which Donald Trump had in his possession. We know he was fascinated with these because he took one of them out during his administration and showed the world a top secret video or top secret image of an Iranian nuclear site. Now, I can neither confirm nor deny what the classification level of that is. All I know is when I saw that image on the front page of a newspaper, I knew that that should not have been shown to the press or anyone else unless Donald Trump opened his mouth and declared it declassified. And once it's declassified, it can go to anybody. Straight to the Russians, right? Uh, under Freedom of Information Act, straight to Chinese intelligence. They probably got it blown up into a wall-sized image just so that they can brag about how Donald Trump gave them some of the best imagery intelligence they've had in decades. Now, that's the frame-type documents in the, you know, kiss, marry, kill uh, genre of brag, frame. And now the final category, I believe Donald Trump kept some of these documents to sell. There is just no way. There are eight documents. I call them the most secret eight that are so secret and classified. There are no handling, um, or, or I should say special access program code words associated with it because they are a compartmentation within a compartmentation and it probably has something to do with America's deepest enemies. Doesn't matter. When they redact the special access program code word off of a trial that's full of top secret documents, then they're really secret documents. Donald Trump had those in his possession. He also had what I suspect is probably the most damning document, a secret document which came from the Department of Energy, which was marked formally restricted data. That is an old classification talking about formally restricted from World War II because it related to America's atomic bomb inventory and our capability. Why Donald Trump would have anything to do 
with our atomic bomb inventory, how our atomic bombs work, how many there are, where they're located, and quite possibly the plans for the warheads, I don't know. All I know is that document is worth billions to the right seller. And finally, the other documents were the ones that I don't even want to talk about. They were the ones marked HCS-P, Human Control System. That is the CIA and other agencies' classification for the real names, uh, identities, and activities of America's human spies who are infiltrated into other countries. Those are worth gold, flatbeds of gold to the right foreign intelligence agency because you can root out spies. I don't know what they're related to. I'm not cleared for it. I don't want to know what they're related to. No one should want to know what they were related to. Donald Trump stole them and kept them. So in that whole pantheon, most of the most secret ones were the ones Donald Trump would have kept to sell. And I don't know what the Saudis were getting for their $2 billion that they handed to Jared Kushner. But I would not be surprised as this investigation continues that we find out that there was a buyer's market and Donald Trump has decided that he would sell America's deepest secrets and become the biggest trader in American history. Benedict Arnold, you better move over. Your $2 million is nothing to $2 billion that we suspect the Saudis gave us for information that came from Donald Trump and his family. One more thing. If you want to hear the best analysis of myself, Malcolm Nance, you can go to malcolmnance at substack.com or YouTube. 